This meeting of the Starful Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And at the conclusion of our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Alderman Parker has a special presentation in honor of the National Day of Prayer. So please remain standing for that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, since 1952, the U.S. Congress has designated the first Thursday in May as National Day of Prayer. And in honor of that Thursday, which is Thursday, May the 6th, this week, I've asked Reverend Chip Stevens and Reverend Sam Bonner uh, to open our session tonight in prayer. Reverend Stevens. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you today and we, we praise you for the beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for all of the blessings that you've bestowed upon our community and upon our nation. And Father, we do want to lift up to you our community as well as our country. Father, we thank you for these aldermen who are here and for the, the incredible task that you've given them, for the mayor. Father, I pray that you will guide them even tonight in wisdom as they discuss some of the things regarding uh, our community. Father, we want to pray for our governor. We want to pray for our Congress. We want to pray for our president. And we want to pray for our, our national uh, Congress. And Lord, we just we, we thank you for them, and we just pray for them as they make decisions. We want to pray for our troops who are serving overseas and protecting us. We want to pray for their protection this day. We pray for their families who are left behind. We pray that they know your comfort and your strength and your guidance. Lord, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in neighboring communities who've gone through some natural disasters lately. And we pray for them and their rebuilding efforts, that they will see your guiding hand, that they will know your love. And Lord, again, we thank you so much because you've been so good to us. And with the incredible blessings that you've bestowed upon us, we recognize there's responsibility with that. And just pray that you'll help us to that responsibility in a manner that pleases you. We do love you and we thank you so much. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all you have been done and all you have done for each and every one of us. And Father, we just pray your blessing now upon the city of Starford and the mayor of all the Alderman. We just pray that you would bless them and guide them in a way that Father, we just thank you for those that, that have suffered a loss during the hurricane and part of this test. We just thank you for everything. And Father, we just pray your blessing upon each one that are here. And Father, that as we govern ourselves and as we observe, as the, the mayor and the board discuss the affairs of the city, we just thank you in advance that you would guide and that you would lead them, not only them, but lead the ones that are here instead of here. And Father, we give all blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Bonner and Pastor Steve. Yeah. All right, you have before you the modified written agenda. Are there any proposed changes to the modified agenda? Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may. I'm looking for the old, for my old agenda because I hadn't had an opportunity to look at the new one. But I got a few matters I want to pull off. So let me just start with from the old agenda. Let's uh, start on page um, page um, dealing with Roman numeral ten on the board business. First thing I'm going to pull off is item I L rather uh, about the um, M M L. I want to pull that that matter off, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, the next matter will be Roman numeral 11, A, uh, airport. Want to pull that one off. Um, Want to move on over to the um, electric department um, for the mayor to sign a TVA rate change agreement. Want to pull that off. Uh, Want to go down to engineering and streets. Want to pull off. Um, Hold on one second. All right, engineering streets want to pull off three, four, and five. And um, 
I hadn't looked at the new agenda item number 86 that was under personnel, the request from uh, uh, public services to about this salary adjustment that should be in the executive session. Is that, is that an executive session? Okay. And um, I think that's it, Ms. Mayor. I think that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is on page four, item 10L and item 11A1 off the consent agenda. On page five, item E2, item F3, and item F4 off the consent agenda. On page six, item number five at the top of the page off the consent agenda. And that's it. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Please note uh, those items have been removed from the consent agenda on yours to have for you. Are there any other proposed modifications to the written agenda? I don't I've, I've, I don't have my staff report, but um, under Engineering and Streets F6, that 25-8 does not meet the number in the staff report. Yeah, that's correct. I forgot to lift that one off. I'm sorry, gentlemen. <laughs> You're um, correct. So I don't know if we just need to revise that not sure if that needs to come off. I want it off, Mr. Mayor, if he doesn't. Okay. That's item six at the top of page six off the consent agenda. Any other proposed modifications? Yes. Um, although we're going to have a public hearing tonight on the historic preservation ordinance, um, due to some information I received from the attorney, I need to be able to change a couple of the language couple of the sentences in the ordinance and so what I would ask is that we do still have the public hearing tonight because it's been advertised and there may be people here that want to speak to it but that we move the actual approval of the ad an ordinance to the next meeting which would be item X uh, E all right so the proposed revision <laughs> from Alderman Corey is to remove item 10 E on page 3 from the agenda is there any objection any objection all right, seeing none, please note the change. Item 10E on page 3 has been removed from the agenda. Any other proposed revisions to the agenda? Mayor. Alderman Carver. In the uh, section announcement of comment, Board of Alderman comments, um, in the wake of the recent fires, we're going to do the first presentation to the Stormwell Fire Department. So it'll be recognition to Stormwell Fire Department. Okay, so please note... Alderman Carver has proposed revision to his comment under item number five to be changed to recognition of the Starkville Fire Department. Is there any objection to that proposed revision? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. All right. Are there any other proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revision? <laughs> All right, seeing none, a motion to approve the agenda as revised would be in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Corey to approve the agenda as revised. Shall I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. All right, you have your modified uh, consent agenda before you. Any objection to the consent agenda as revised? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, next item you have before you is the February 16, 2010 minutes. Discuss. City Clerk, you prepared these? Uh, yes, I do. So everything is in order and we meet all of our uh, matters and things and everything legally okay? It is. Move approval, Mr. Mayor. Based Alderman. on City Clerk's representation. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to approve the minutes of the City of Starkville Board of Alderman recess meeting of February 16, 2010, based on the City Clerk's what was the representation. Based on the City Clerk's representation. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Corey. Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure passes. Uh, next matter before you is the March 16th minutes. 
Mr. Mayor, may I recognize? You may. City Clerk, the same inquiry. Your answer is the same as the previous inquiries? Uh, I did not prepare these, but I did review them. So you recommend the approval to, uh, by the board? That's correct. Mr. Mayor, based on the City Clerk's representation, I move approval of these minutes. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to approve the minutes of the City Historical Board of Alderman recess meeting of March 16, 2010, based on the representation of the City Clerk. Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure passes. All right. We'll now move to comments by the Mayor and the Board. And, uh... I have one comment that uh, I previously made, although uh, there is an addition to it this evening, and that is uh, that there will be uh, power outages uh, because the electric department is going to be replacing transformers uh, that will occur over the next three months. The first of those is scheduled to occur tomorrow, May 5th, uh, in order to cause uh, the most minimum disruption possible, uh, the electric department will be doing this work in the wee hours of the morning from 3 to 5 o'clock. Different areas of the city will be affected in different ways. Uh, the longest power outages experienced will be in the southwest portion of the city. Uh, areas in the southwest portion of the city could experience up to two hours uh, from 3 to 5 in power outage. Uh, then the southeast portion of the city uh, will experience less of a duration, probably not the full hour, full, full two hours. Uh, finally, North Starkville will experience only minor uh, disruption in, in, in power. And that is on May 5th first, and then additionally it will happen again on June 5th. Uh, finally, it will happen two more times on July 10th and August 7th, 2010. <coughs> All right, uh, Alderman Carver. First of all, uh, in response to that, what, what preparations have been made for like special needs individuals or anybody with any kind of medical condition that requires electronic service? Anything? I mean, Mr. Hadaway. Any further discussion on that topic? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move to comments by the members of the board. Alderman Carver. Um, we felt as the mayor and the board that it was symbolic that the first uh, employee of the month recognition of this board due to the Storm Fire Department due uh, to the fact of what they've, what they've handled and logistically and uh, response-wise over the last four or five months. So if you would, Roger, our chief man, come up and just, it basically says a sincere appreciation of we the mayor and the board of honor, uh, all the knowledge of the temporary service and all the outstanding contributions the department has made. I know it's a tough job, so it's a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I, I, would, uh, I would be aired by it if I didn't recognize that we had a lot of help in this with the police department, the electric department, the water department. Uh, it, it was truly a team effort along with some, the, the county uh, that assisted us. And on behalf of 60 firefighters who were truly going to be humbled with this, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Are there any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? Any further comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. Any citizen wishing to make a comment uh, may do so uh, and be recognized for a maximum of three minutes by coming forward and please state your name for the record at the outset. Good evening to the Mayor and Board. My name is Alvin Turner, Ward 7. Uh, to the Vice Mayor of Citron and Alderman Vaughn. The concerns of the citizens 
uh, again, very special. The citizens, they do not understand why the Carver Ditch situation that the NACP hadn't found out why and how come the people are suffering like they're suffering. Now, if they get in contact with the NACP, we won't we will have to do better. Um, no one wants blood on their hand of something that could be avoided. Uh, we don't want no child or no adult to get snake bit. They're crawling. We we do not want no one to fall in that ditch where it be child or adult. Then we uh, we have a responsibility to, to citizens. Then we should that let them know that we appreciate and we care. The traffic lights on Main Street and Family Dollar Store in Bruce, Bruce the citizens said that uh, they hold real long and they don't understand. They might need to be checked. Our, uh, the church signs and stuff, our, um, the church is supposed to be a safe place for if, if we're going to attack the church, that makes people wonder what we really are. Those are some concerns for ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Further citizen comments? Good evening. My name is Margaret Jordan, and um, I stand in support of Lee E. Brand, Jr. for the appointment to the Board of Education. I would like to begin by reading a letter that was submitted by uh, several area pastors for his support. And it reads, we a group of concerned minister, ministers with members in the Starful City Schools have drafted this letter to voice our support for Lee E. Brand Jr. being appointed to the Board of Education. We encourage you to make Mr. Brand an appointee because we hold the collective conviction that he is qualified, compassionate, and insightful enough to assist the board in moving our city's educational system forward. As well, Lee is connected well enough in the community to know and express the interest of the citizenship. He is, a quali he is as qualified as anyone, and Mr. Brand will promote the betterment of our district, our children, and our community. With this desire for his appointment, in mind, we humbly submit this letter to you, our, to the Board of Aldermen and to Mayor Wiseman. We also thank you for your serious consideration in this recommendation. May God bless you. Sincerely, Thomas Rogers, Eddie Jones, Char Charlie F. Barnes Sr., John F. Johnson, Greg Jones, Lonzi Carpenter, and Joseph Hawkins. And I am Margaret Jordan, and I stand and represent a parents, because I am a parent of um, Starford School District. I also hold um, letters, a collective letters of 381 members that are citizens, teachers, business owners, um, and concerned citizens of Starford School System and Starford City that also support the e Jr. for that appointment. Should I give this to you? Uh, yeah, give them to the city clerk if she can. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. To the mayor and the ordinance, I'm Daisy McDowell about the car of a driver ditch. It has gotten worse. The sewage is running down through it now. It's hard for me to go out of my back door. I done pulled so much of bleach out in my house today, I thought it was all in my house. <laughs> Apparently, it's outside. You can't sit on the front. You can't sit on the back. It smells awful. And I'm pleading with you all to pipe that ditch and cover it because it's getting worse and worse. It's not healthy. The mosquitoes is awful already. The snakes. It's a little, my friend said it was a little rattlesnake in my backyard. 
yesterday. He was like that. Christina was a snake. So I'm begging, pleading <coughs> to cover Carver Drive Ditch because he's been out there. Mr. Mayor, may be recognized. You may. Ms. Frewell, uh, the board had um, received information from the city engineer that uh, probably the uh, preferable time to begin is going to be in July. Just continue to monitor that for us and see can we do the board approved work any sooner, if, if, if allowable, as determined by you know, your staff. But just, just stay on top of that so we can address this you know, as, as soon as we can. Maybe July, but just stay on top of it and let us know. Thank you. And the Public Services Department has been working on the sewer. Uh, in my last conversation with Doug Devlin about it, uh, he indicated that they were nearing the final stages of completion. And I, it's my understanding that that work is expected to be done uh, this summer before the end of June uh, on the sewage repair. Are there any other citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Okay, seeing none, we will move to public appearances. And our first public appearance this evening is by Dan Moreland, Chairman of the Parks Commission, and Matthew Wright. As y'all know, we're not coming up here voluntarily. It's mandated that we do this. So, uh, <laughs> uh, all of you have a uh, copy of our current sports program summary. Uh, all of our, uh, not all of them, but most all of our activities is up. We've got approximately 250 girls participating in the, uh, that's five through 12, in the uh, girls softball. Uh, we threw in volleyball this year. Uh, have four teams in it. Winona and Columbus have copied us in our high school softball, and so we down a few teams in it. But it's kind of it's kind of makes you feel good, even though we down that some of the other team, uh, school uh, towns are copying us instead of us always copying them. As you can see in here, we got we got a new website coming up. It's be user friendly. It's guaranteed the gray-headed people can use it. That, so uh, I guess that's me too. Uh, but as you see on this page, it goes from age to organized activity, not necessarily sports, but activities from age five through whatever. Uh, our silly camp deal got a state award last year, and it's basically what it says, a silly camp, but it works, it pays <coughs> off, it gets kids coming. Uh, on the news last week, all the schools are participate. I mean, are trying to cut budgets and do better and cut uh, monies and this type of stuff. And one school, and I'm not going to call the name, but it wasn't in our county. They are going to cut their budget by two hundred thousand dollars a year by cutting out uh, cutting out uh, elementary PE. Now, to me, that's working against anything that everybody has said to put your potato chips down, get up off the couch, and go play ball. But, uh, you know, I just hope we don't come to having to cut out activity. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to, for a ball and a bat or, a, you know, anything like that, but that's something I hope it doesn't come to. Uh, a soccer uh, tournament was rained out last week, 69 teams. And that's probably a thousand players, not counting grandmothers and granddaddies, mothers and daddies. That hurt us a lot, but you know that's just one of those things. We were real fortunate; the weather didn't didn't do anything to our fields. New Albany, I think, the weather, the rain, and all wiped their park completely out. So they said it would be two, three weeks before they could even open back up. Uh, if you look over on the second page here, those are dogs and not deer. Uh, the dog park, it's doing good. Uh, a lot of people there we're considering or discussing opening another one on the south side of town. Uh, it's been a great success. Uh, we got that ditch running through it, but it, so far it hadn't affected us any as long as we keep it clean. Uh, the pools, we're reworking the pool, the pool houses and stuff, and they will both open on June the 1st. Uh, 
that's about all we have other than what's in here. If y'all have any questions of, uh, uh, pertaining to this, we'd be glad to let Matthew answer them there. Questions or comments by the members of the board? <coughs> Are there any questions or comments from the members of the board? Alderman Ball. I was agreeing with Paul, Matthew, and, and <clears throat> Matthew, I want to thank you so much for the work that you're doing on and J.L. King on Westside Pool. It looked great. They got a new face lip, and I'm sure it's going to attract some attention. I appreciate all the work that y'all have put into it. Appreciate it. I'd like to add to what uh, Alderman Bowen said. Matthew's doing a great job. And I would brag on him, but it would ruin my reputation if I bragged on him. She is taking men. That's important. <laughs> but he does. He does a good job. As I told y'all the last meeting, we have uh, the gym has been built, and it, you know it takes a lot to man to run it. But our payroll has not increased any. In fact, we're down two people from what it was when we built the gym. So anytime you can take on something like that and not increase your uh, payroll, then I think we've done a you know pretty good job of managing. We put people to work that had been kind of floating, and uh, they all accepted it, except Matthew's leadership. And uh, I think we've got a good crew, probably the best crew we've ever had. Uh, Sammy Wilcutt's doing a good job. He, he come here like Bailey Howell and all the rest of them to play basketball out here and forgot to go home. That's about 40 years ago. But Sammy's doing a good job with the youth. Uh, he's just <coughs> fixing to get into his busy time. But uh, what we need all of y'all to do is to encourage people to use the parks. If the numbers are up, we have from 350 to 500 that uses the gym and the walking tracks and all every day. But uh, we want to encourage you to send your kids down, bring them down, uh, and let's uh, keep everything going, keep our numbers increasing because that's what makes all this worthwhile. It's kind of like, you know, you build a business and they say, oh, you're going to have enough parking. Well, I hope not. And that's the same way we are with our parking down there. We, we, we're running out of parking, but we're still looking into doing some more with that. The county is still backed off. They hadn't backed off, but they hadn't built a bridge that they were going to that will add parking on the south end. Uh, that's coming hopefully this summer. They were designed to put in just a, one bridge across there out of the middle, but uh, the engineers said that they would have to have some pilings down, so that took a little longer, and that's what we're holding on now. They've also agreed to uh, cut and smooth up the field down by the Coca-Cola plant, and we're going to have some, uh, hopefully to have some practice fields down on that. We can't put lights because of the uh, airport, but uh, we've worked in agreement with the airport to have that, and once we get it smoothed down to where it's grown up and rutted to the point that we can't do it with our equipment, but the, city, the county said that they would uh, come down and bush hog it and uh, smooth it up with the road grader, and then after that we'll be able to maintain it and we'll be able to utilize some more space down there. Matthew, you have anything else? That's about it. Well, if y'all have no questions, we appreciate your time. Thank Any thank you. further <laughs> questions or comments? Well, I just want to also say, I mean, I we noticed on the financial statements, and I mean, your, your revenues are actually up $43,000, and that's a result of increased rent on the uh, multi-purpose building. Correct. Uh, so that that's that's great. I mean, it we, looks like every category seems to be up. We had so, nothing to go by when we come up with that. Sure. But the rent is coming in real good. We have two churches that meet down there that pays rent, uh, uh, renting out the buildings. But we had no idea who would rent what. But it's just worked out real good. Uh, and I, we appreciate the fact that y'all going to match the dollar for dollar for what we rent it for. That's going to help us a lot. <laughs> thank you for your thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Moreland and Mr. Wright. All right. Our next public appearance is by John Maynard. Kathy Yelston was unable to make it tonight on the GAP program. Mr. Maynard. Uh, Kathy Yelston does send her regrets. She is uh, on the coast tonight working with a company down there. The, the good news is it looks like as though the economy is turning around considerably, uh, at least in the state of Mississippi, because we've got more people from MDA and my peers across the state are much more busy than we have been. Uh, thank you for entertaining me. Entertain me inter Thanks for having me tonight. Uh, I have a good news, bad news sort of scenario to bring to you. Bad news is 30% or more of the population of Octavio County lives below the poverty line, the federal poverty line. The good news of that is, number one, the bulk of that is comprised of students who typically have very, very little income uh, and are not necessarily uh, 
in, in a, causing a, a distress situation. The other piece of good news is that the state of Mississippi has recognized us as a GAP eligible community. The GAP program uh, allows the, the county, the affected county, uh, that has the, the certain criteria to be to use a GAP tool to in, entice businesses to locate in the area. That tool is uh, pr predominantly paid for by the state of Mississippi. <coughs> That's an, an incentive that uh, allows for the exemption for up to 10 years of uh, sales and use tax on equipment uh, and, and buildings for uh, or construction equipment and such for expansions of any business creating 10 or more jobs. Also allows for sale, uh, no, sorry, uh, franchise and, and income taxes uh, exempt from uh, state income tax for those same businesses. Also allows for a 10 year tax abatement on that property, on the ad valorem tax for that specific company locating or expanding in the area and creating 10 or more jobs. It's a significant um, incentive. Tunica is a gap county as well. The Schultz plant that located there, which had in excess of $300 million worth of investment and over 300 jobs uh, in, the, in the next five years, one of the, the primary drivers for that company locating there is the, the gap incentive that was available. Uh, another company that has actually, that was uh, represented, that being represented by the same firm that brought Schultz to, uh, to Tunica County has also been looking in our area and is very aware of gap incentives and we have a, a, a very good shot at uh, being one of the, one of the, the counties that is uh, considered for, uh, for, this new, for this other company. Um, the county has approved. The, the, the county has to, has to approve uh, the state's uh, gap incentive and they also have to give up essentially their, their right to determine which businesses do and don't get a 10-year tax abatement. They basically pass that off to the, to the state of Mississippi. The state of Mississippi has a pretty good vetting process. They understand what we need and what we don't need. Uh, they will work directly with us so that there's no confusion about what companies are gap eligible what companies are not and uh, they will be looking out for our best interest. We're not going to be parking any and every business that's looking to, to grab hold of that, that uh, incentive and set up shop, go for 10 years without paying any taxes on it, and then moving out. Uh, we're going to be looking at businesses that are growth oriented, that want to absolutely have a, a presence here, and who need to be in Octavia Hall County. So we're not looking at, at uh, fly-by-night type of companies. We're not looking at anybody that would be uh, uglying up uh, Octavia Hall County. We'd be looking at things that absolutely provided growth and prosperity to our area. Keep in mind that those taxes that are being exempted do not include school taxes and taxes that are specifically levied for uh, fire and police protection. So those two very important taxes will be uh, will be included. Will be the, the companies that locate here will be paying those taxes. Yeah, before your resolution to endorse <coughs> the uh, the gap the gap resolution that was passed by the county. I highly re recommend that you uh, absolutely endorse that. I thank you in advance for doing so. Uh, this is something that is going to set us apart and give us a, a, a huge leg up in attracting and growing the businesses that are, are here in Starkville. Uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions about the gap incentives or, or other things that uh, you may have on your mind. Questions, comments, Alderman McCarver. <coughs> Mr. Maynard, I was actually quite surprised that we were gap eligible and is it and I guess it's a two-fold question, but uh, which counties around us are gap eligible? And then on top of that, the second part is, is it the students that put us into the, the gap eligible bracket? I, I'll, I'll go from the back side. Uh, I don't have definite proof that it's the students that put us there. However, when you look at the demographic uh, scales that are there, you can see that the bulk of the people that are living below the poverty line are living in one, per, one or two person households. Uh, uh, are in the age group. Uh, there's a huge spike in that, uh, that 20 to uh, 19 to 29 year olds. Uh, there's a huge spike there. All the indicators say that it's college students. Uh, you can look around and see that we do have prosperity in Starkville. There are pockets of, of, of uh, poverty uh, in and around Starkville and in the county, but the bulk of it you see a fairly prosperous county. So you, it, it, the numbers sort of add up for it to be students. So that's really anecdotal on my part. Uh, and just a, you know, kind of a, a thumbnail idea about where those demographics are coming from. Uh, the other one is what other counties are around us that are, that are GAP eligible. District 4 in Lowndes County is GAP eligible, but they, they're, they're, they don't have a lot of infrastructure and other things that are in place to be able to attract new businesses that are there. Uh, as far as being around us, none of the other counties that touch us, um, I don't believe. I have, to, I have to look at the list. Um, Neshoba County, I believe, is Not actually... No, I'm sorry, Knoxville County, Knoxville County is actually gap eligible. But there again, they're not, they don't have as much infrastructure in place as we do. 
Uh, so we have a, a real opportunity here to be very attractive for both the things that we have already and the things that we can put on the table as far as the gap intake. Further questions or comments? Question. <coughs> so this is a separate, our gap agreement, our program will be separate than that of the county? Or are they two and are they one they're, they're the They're one same? the same. What you're doing tonight is actually endorsing what the county has put out there and allowing for the, the taxes that would be uh, levied in this program from the city of Starkville to be included in that. Obviously only if they locate in the city of Starkville. Correct. Yeah. And if they, they meet all the gap eligibility requirements set up by the state of Mississippi. Further questions or comments from Mr. Maynard? Any further questions or comments from the board? Any further questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Thank Maynard. You very much. Our final public appearance tonight is from Bobby Grimes presenting the proposed formation of the multi jurisdictional task force with Chief Lindley. <coughs> Hey boy, this is uh, retired Major Bobby Grimes. Uh, I'm going to help him with his presentation as far as just an introduction. Bobby is a resident of Starkville, he and his wife. Uh, he had a distinguished career with the State Narcotics Agency. He's been retired, and since he has retired, he has been working for uh, West Point and Clay County on a uh, concept that many of y'all see quite a bit of these days in the media and on television, uh, which is a cold case squad to solve uh, unsolved homicides that are uh, lingering. He has had success there and is in fact, he and his team have solved two there already that were heretofore unsolved. Um, what Mr. Grimes is going to talk with you about is something that I first dreamed about 25 years ago which was a concept of having Starkville, West Point, Columbus, and three counties work together <clears throat> against major violent crimes. All three cities and all three counties <coughs> have unsolved cold case homicides. So we had an opportunity for all of the department heads to get together, the three sheriffs, the three chiefs, and um, that's what you're going to be hearing as a product of that. And there's a little more to it that we'll talk about as far as crime scene work in a minute. But um, Bobby, uh, as I said, is somebody that we all have total confidence in, and he is retired now. We hope that he'll take this task force if, in fact, we can approve it and uh, run with it. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about the implementation of it, and it's going to be... Uh, not completely reinventing the wheel. It's going to be very similar to the Tri-County Task Force that we had up until a couple of years ago that became uh, unfunded, but that was primarily for narcotics. This is going to be for violent crimes. We will have one of the first ones in the state, but Bobby, I'm stealing your thunder. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having me tonight, and let me speak to you. What we're trying to form is exactly what the Chief has explained to you. Um, we are putting together a grant proposal, and I've already submitted it to the uh, Department of Public Safety and Planning to help fund the uh, formation of this task force, uh, asking for the salaries of everyone involved in the task force. Uh, each agency would be responsible for supplying one officer, one investigator to the task force, uh, except for Clay County Sheriff's Department, and they're going to be supplying an investigator, a director, and an administrative assistant. They've already signed off on their responsibilities for that part. Um, the grant is for two years. It's, out, it's through the Recovery Act funding. Um, where, and it, the only loop to that or only catch to that is that you have to agree to fund it for one additional year, your employee for one additional year after the funding is expired. That's just a requirement of the grant. Uh, the salary for your investigator that we put in for is $34,000 a year. We're asking that each agency uh, over the next two years commit $25,000 towards the operation of the, the task force and that money would be used for basic operations, <coughs> buying, buying equipment that we need for the office and supplies for the office. Uh, all investigations and expenses encumbered by those investigations 
will be the responsibility of the agency in which jurisdiction the investigation falls. So it's not going to be a lot of crime lab or, or travel or anything that goes on any agency except what they're responsible for on their crimes. Um, any money that's left over from those two years will be moved back to their host agency to help, help fund for the positions that were um, value of $25,000, um, which would be a, the total of $50,000 for, for your city. One of the things that the city of Starwell has is that uh, they were part of the Golden Triangle Task Force when it was dissolved and there's money still left in the C's fund account. Uh, I think it's like $40,000 and four agencies in it. From Tri-County. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, from Tri-County Task Force. Uh, so the first year, the only uh, amount of money that you would have to come up with would be $15,000 then $25,000 the next year. Um, I, the focus of the task force is cold cases to begin with, violent crimes, major crimes uh, that deal uh, with the association of drugs and gang activity and, and, and any nexus back to those activities. Um, and anybody here knows that most of your crimes are, have a drug nexus back to the 70% of your crimes. That have, the two investigations that we worked in Clay County so far that we have indicted, it was a, a direct link back to drug and gang organizations uh, that were making, committing murders to help protect members of the gang organization and the drug organizations. Um, any investigation that done by this task force will be filtered to the agency head there would no, no investigation will go to the task force unless it's approved by the, the chief or the sheriff of the, of the area that the investigation is going to be taking place. A couple of things I might add to that. Um, we don't have many homicides, thank goodness, in this area of the state, but we all have some. And unfortunately, some of the ones that we have had in the past have been really, really gruesome crimes, and some of these are still unsolved. We continually work on these. However, if you don't have anybody dedicated specifically to work on these type of cases, it's hard to put a lot of uh, effort in it on a continuing basis because other cases are coming along. And all of our criminal investigators are not specialists, but uh, if you will, a doctor, a general practitioner. They might work on everything from a burglary to a robbery to <coughs> a homicide to a car theft. So homicide investigations in our area is something that most people don't get to really specialize in. So once you get into that forte and that mindset, you can do a lot more with it. And on these cold cases, it takes quite a bit of dedication to uh, nothing but them. Now, a caveat of all that is Columbus has a crime lab, and they have a certified forensic scientist over there. And Columbus has expanded on this concept, and we've all agreed to it, that the $25,000 would not only cover our match for the grant, but it would also cover each department being able to have a crime scene officer trained. And what I mean by that is somebody that would go over there for one week out of the month for one year and become a certified, uh, tested, and approved, registered crime scene specialist. Now, what we foresee that being is uh, an on-call basis where it would work like this. If any of the jurisdictions have a major crime, you would have two people out of that pool of people on call that would go and work that crime with the jurisdiction uh, agency that has the crime that occurred there. Now, uh, that would give us a lot of expertise and knowledge on working these scenes that sometimes is, again, not uh, always continuous as far as the quality of it. It would give us the ability to work very much more effectively in that area. And if we solved them all, and I certainly hope we do, they do, if we can do this, uh, we would also, and they would also at the same time, be available for fresh major violent crimes if they occurred. And unfortunately, 
they will. I wish I could sit here and tell you that they never will, but I always feel like I'm not but one bad phone call away from the next who done it homicide. And surely they will happen if we all, you know, remain here. But uh, I think this is a well thought out concept. Again, it's not breaking uh, any uh, unplowed ground because it's very similar to the narcotics task force before. But I think this will address some areas that we need to be addressed and uh, hopefully we'll have some success at putting some of these um, crimes to, to bed and solve them. And I, I think it's a great idea for the investment. This is being set up under the interlocal agreement, just such as Golden Triangle was. And if you choose to, to become a part of this and support it, the only thing that we would need is for the, at your vote of approval, to be the mayor and the city clerk or whoever your testament is, to sign off on the interlocal agreement so we can uh, complete all that. And uh, Chief, I, I read through your summary. Uh, yes. the program today and uh, I, I just want to commend y'all uh, for being proactive on uh, trends that you're picking up uh, and uh, potential uh, ways uh, for th th this region as a whole uh, to come together in the area of law enforcement uh, to, to combat them. I, I think it's an excellent uh, proposal and uh, just, just want to commend you on your work. Any uh, Alderman Vaughn? Mr. Brown, will the agent be full-time or part-time? They'll be full-time. They have to be full-time employees of the uh, agency. Um, that's, that's one of the requirements for the uh, Recovery Act money, for you to spend that money. They're a full-time employee of the agency. They would fall under the agency's policies and guidelines. They would report to the agency head as far as any kind of actions or special duties or disciplinary actions. It's straight, strictly under city policies. Further questions or comments? Just one question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chief, uh, will we have to uh, employ in additional staff uh, to uh, carry out our end other than the financing of it? No, so the way this works is, as I understand it, it's going to be just like Tri-County was before. There will be a person hired that will be the City of Starkville uh, person, and we will match a part of that grant. But it's basically just like we had under Tri-County, except the emphasis here is going to be violent crimes and homicide as opposed to narcotics. The host agency for the task force will be the Clay County. Um, they will be handling all the, the reimbursement requests and all the um, paperwork that, that will be sent from your department. It will go through Clay County before it goes to DPS planning for, for reimbursement each month. Uh, it's my understanding it takes about four weeks to get your money back after you pay an officer through the DPS planning once they get the paperwork. Last question. Chief, is there a line item uh, or 15,000 miles to cover this at this time, or you'd be asking the board to? What we anticipate, Mr. Perkins, yes, is sir. we'll uh, attempt to use the money that's left from Tri-County. Yes, sir. And uh, whatever money we need, and it, uh, we've only got um, until October yes, before sir. a new budget yes, sir. kicks in. I think we're going to have enough to yes, sir. come up with the money that we fund it through now in October. Well, no, and uh, the grant's got to be approved. Right. No, no money would be needed this fiscal year. Uh, the grant would not be approved until October. That's, that's usually their approval time. So any money that, uh, that we're asking for will be coming out of the next fiscal year. Will this project die if the grant is not approved? Yes. Well, I don't, I don't know that we'll have the people putting uh, the agents will have the money or the manpower to put into the, right. the task force. And I'm guessing we have them. I mean, we feel pretty confident. Yeah. Confident about our proposal? Well, you, you know, Star was a lot better off than some of the other agencies around, you know, West Point and Clay County, and they, they really economically strapped, and I just don't see them having the money to put a, to free up an officer to strictly work on these type of investigations. Without the grant. Without the grant. Although it's worthwhile enough that I think all of us would if we could. This is a relatively, well, back to the future. Before there was the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, Clay, Lowndes, and Octobaha went together and formed what was then the Tri-County, uh, I'm sorry, the Golden Triangle Narcotics Task Force, and then the state narcotics kicked in and that was dissolved. So we're just going back on ground that was tread almost 40 years ago. But uh, I think it's more timely now than ever.
having lived with some of these homicide victims in my mind for almost 25 years, I think it's the thing we need to do. Further questions or comments by the <clears throat> members of the board? So, so, Chief, you would have to check to make sure we could use the multi, is it the multi-unit drug task force? It's that, the, the, the money left over is the Tri-County Task Force money that was left over that had not been expended. Seized funds. Seized funds, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, then any other money would be October 1st. Mm -hmm. Well, we, even, we would not even take that money, use that money until October 1. Right. That's right. really going to be the kickoff of this whole project as far as funding and all. It will be October 1 this year, fiscal year 11. And the, the money that we've got, we've already met with the sheriff here in Octavio County, and all four agencies were involved in Tri-County, and all four of them have agreed to do it uh, as far as moving their money into this task force. They're equal, their $10,000 share of the, of the 40000 that's left in the account next fiscal year. It's, it's allowed by law. Further questions or comments by the members of the board? Any further questions or comments? Any further questions or comments? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Uh, Alderman Court, would you like to introduce? Oh, well, sure. This is the same ordinance that was mentioned at the last public hearing we had. Um, nothing has changed between now and then, although in light of recent events, there will be some minor uh, changes in, I guess, the legalese of the ordinance between now and the next meeting. So that's the only difference between now and then. There, there's been no changes in this ordinance yet, so it's as it was. Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Are there any questions or comments from the members of the board? All right, seeing none, we'll move into the... Oh, you do. Alderman Carver. Uh, just for public record, I had a couple questions. Uh, what would happen if someone wanted to opt out of this or if they wanted to not participate and they lied right in the middle of the historic district? Well, this ordinance itself doesn't actually mandate the creation of any particular districts. That. What it does is it creates a commission, and, which is similar <coughs> to planning and zoning. Uh, people interested in forming historic district would bring that before the commission. The commission would look at it, review it, and then bring that before the Board of Aldermen for final approval. So if there was someone that were, say, in a district that didn't want to be, then they would have the opportunity to make that point um, before both the commission and or the Board of Aldermen uh, as, far as, as far as not being included into the district. But you're talking about the whole zone, not individual property owners. Right, but people would still be given the opportunity to speak at those meetings and, and you know, make the case that even though they're drawn in the district, they would prefer not to be in the district. And then it would be up to the board and or the historic commission to take action. But as it's currently written, there is no opt-out op There is no opt-out um, ability for anybody within a certain, with anybody in which a district is determined. Right. Um, to, if, if the designation of a district exists per the commission, then no individual owner within that district would have the ability to opt out. Right. Further questions? Alderman Carver. I was just going to say this is more for the formation of the commission, not getting into the right. day to day operations. Right. Yeah. The, the framework is that you would establish a commission, uh, and, and that's the major body of work of, of that ordinance. Uh, and then that commission uh, goes and, and helps with the heavy lifting of uh, working through uh, how exactly historic districts would operate. Uh, so it's, it's a two-part process. Further questions or comments? Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? All right, seeing none, we'll move to the public comment portion of the public hearing. And in keeping with standard practice on uh, public hearings, uh, we, we, we'll conduct this uh, the, the, the same way as we have in the past. That is, uh, we will alternate uh, between those wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance and those wishing to speak against. Anyone uh, wishing to speak on either side may be recognized for a maximum of three minutes. Each side uh, will have a total of 15 minutes. Uh, once that is exhausted, uh, then that side's 
time is exhausted and no one else uh, will, will be able to speak on, on that side. Uh, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Either one. And please introduce yourself for the record. I'm Michelle Jones. Um, I live at 408 Greensboro Street in the Greensboro National Register District, but actually I'm here tonight as a, an employee of the Department of Archives and History. I worked with 60 local communities across the state and directly with 30 in the northern part of the state who have adopted a similar ordinance. I work with their commissions. I work with um, them as they develop design guidelines, as they develop local district designations, and um, help them. And I am here in that in that role to answer any questions you might have about this ordinance and how it works in other communities. Okay. And it, this time it's not really... Uh, I understand. But that is, if any of you have any questions, that is my job and that is what I'm happy to do. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Anyone wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Ms. Beal? I'm Mary Lee Beal, and I thought I was going to start crying when you asked for this to be postponed, because I have been dealing with this for approximately 30 years. Uh, I live at 516 Greensboro Street, um, but I've been involved with the interest of historical preservation for many, for much longer than that. I believe they're approximately uh, 11 years. Uh, I know people are opposed to this, but I think they really need to look and understand what their what their opposition is. There's some this thought that well, my civil liberties or my property rights are going to be taken away from me. That is not necessarily the case. Um, for those of you who live in areas that have covenants, then you are protected. These districts, these historical districts, do not have any covenants, and they are trying to somewhat protect themselves. You want to, um, this is the commission, they're going to look into it, but one of the reasons that um, you want historic uh, preservation is you want pre uh, the preservation of the history and you want the preservation of our community. And if you look at the way Starkville has developed the last 50 years, we have not done a very good job. We have built uh, neighborhoods uh, among businesses, et cetera. For those of you who are, have constituents that are opposed to this, the zoning ordinance is far more restrictive on those than the historic, uh, historical uh, preservation ordinance would be. Uh, it's an excellent uh, approach to promoting a municipality, uh, preserving the historic architecture, and cultural resources. Many times objections are based on a misunderstanding of the goals, and this is what I encourage each of you all to talk with your constituents about as to what their objections are. Uh, you can look at Madison, Mississippi. They have very, very strict requirements, and it certainly has not inhibited their growth by any stretch of the imagination. Some people say it's another level of bureaucracy. Uh, it possibly could be considered that. It's also considered, some consider it an inconvenience. But the bottom line is the results are positive. Uh, creation of local historic districts stabilize and often increase residential and commercial property values. You, there are some properties on Gillespie Street uh, a couple that have sat empty uh, for a number of years. Uh, you've got several that need, are desperately being, uh, need repair. Uh, you're dealing with the health and safety of the citizens in this uh, community. Uh, historic rehabilitation encourages additional neighborhood investments and produces a high return for the dollars spent. So 
I would strongly encourage you in two weeks to please consider creating a historical commission and let the, this commission begin the work in trying to create some possible historic districts in this town. And at the moment, we primarily are looking at the Greensboro area, Overstreet area, and the Nash Street area. Thank you, Ms. Bill. Thank you. Is there anyone now wishing to speak against the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing no one, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak for, against, or in general about the ordinance? <laughs> I always get some. Hey, I'm uh, Mark Duncan. I live in Ward 1 at 505 Greensboro Street, and I was part of the committee that actually uh, brought this ordinance before you tonight. Um, to me, what uh, Mr. Bill has mentioned is, is pretty much the gospel according to, to what the things that we need, need to look at uh, from a historic preservation uh, perspective for the city. Um, when my wife and I started uh, first came down to visit Starfield to decide if we were going to move to the city. Uh, one of the things that, that we took back with us uh, were the memories of Greensboro Street, uh, historic, older historic homes tend to leave an impression on people when they come to visit and they tend to have a positive influence on them when they go away and if they start to, to maybe look at Starkville uh, to move here either for work or for retirement, uh, positive impressions of the city are uh, always good for us. Uh, so protecting these areas that create a good impression of the city uh, should be in my mind foremost for the city. Um, in, in that regard, I encourage you to, uh, to pass this ordinance so that we may continue to protect those things that uh, project a positive image for the city. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Anyone wishing to speak for, against, or in general about the proposed ordinance? I'm Bethany Stitch. I live in Ward 1. Um, I'm married to Mark. But uh, I just want to point out one thing that I didn't know until I saw the agenda. But if you're considering becoming GAP certified and abating future taxes, but not protecting the resources that you have right now that are economic drivers for your city. I mean, in our first impression reports, the historic districts were considered one of the most important parts of their visit to Starkville. It is a pivotal part of Richard Florida's creative class economic development drivers formula. So I would encourage you that if you're willing to abate future taxes for future generations, let's protect uh, our historic resources that we've had over 100 years that are in our community that are serving as economic drivers before we abate future taxes. Thank you, Ms. Stitch. Anyone wishing to speak for, against, or in general on the uh, historic preservation <clears throat> ordinance? Any further comment? Any further comment? All right, seeing none, we'll move back into discussion by the board, and now would be a good time if any board members have uh, questions for Ms. Jones, uh, who is a local authority on <coughs> historic preservation, or comments in general. Discussion <coughs> by the members of the board. Alderman Carp. Uh, a couple questions for any, any member on the committee, but I'll uh, just ask them in the simplest way. <clears throat> One, if there are a couple properties on Gillespie that are probably better if they were torn down uh, and, and just rebuilt. So if they were, to clarify, are they going to have to specify or make a house look like the houses next door to it, or would they be free to build a house as long as it pertained to a, a general look and size? I mean, what, what kind of specifications do they have? That's fine. Yes, ma'am. Whatever suits you. When a local district, when a local ordinance, Those are 
second question was this commission, if established, is mainly targeting houses over 50 years old. Is that correct? That is the is that standard, um, the standard number um, established by the National Park Service. It's about a generation and a half, and that's why it exists with um, the Department of Archives and History, with um, the really renewed interest in civil rights sites. We sometimes not look at younger than 50 years, but again, it's it's a you know, 50 years is is, is kind of the okay. standard. Further discussion by the members of the board? Any further discussion by the members of the board? Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, that will conclude our second public hearing on an ordinance creating a historic preservation commission. And that will move us to mayor's business. Uh, and the first order of business is the consideration of changing uh, the mayor's beautification committee to the city of Starkville beautification committee with the adoption of mission statement, purpose, and structure. <coughs> and uh, just for starters on this one, this, the name change uh, should, should not be taken to in any way uh, imply uh, that uh, I am not uh, friendly to city beautification efforts. Uh, to the contrary, the name change uh, implies that this committee uh, has grown and succeeded uh, beyond its original scope, which was more informal and now needs a more formalized structure in keeping uh, with uh, the complement of standing uh, committees that we have in the city. So this is a positive development uh, for the Beautification Committee. Discussion? Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? Alderman Perkins. Mr. Mayor, uh, I see um, a list of names on the handout that is in our packet that says Beautification Committee membership it has a list of names and two uh, liaisons uh, as represents from this board and a staff liaison. The beautification committee membership is not consistent with the city of Stark beautification, beautification committee that's already in place. Is it your intent that we keep the same um, existing beautification committee in addition to these names, whereas under the existing membership there is one uh, member from each ward? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when you look at the handout, I had to kind of go ahead and track some information now. It wasn't all contained in this document. If you see the list here, it, it gives individuals from different areas of expertise. But if you go further to the packet, it, it lists uh, further information about our uh, the names of committee members. You'll see wards 5, 1, 3, 6. In other words, the different uh, members from and represented from different wards. So. I, we just need to make it clear if we approve this document that's before us that we hopefully will uh, not um, eliminate any existing membership. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think we need to add. I think the members, well, as a matter of fact, the members that we do have have done an exemplary job. And I have been a part of the appointment of these individuals from each ward uh, to um, this beautification committee. So we just need some clarification from you on that. Yeah, and it is certainly not my intent uh, to eliminate anybody who is an active part of this committee. Uh, this committee um, has, I guess, morphed as it has drawn interest uh, from people from outside of the committee and as people have become more active participants. Uh, my understanding is uh, that, that, that the committee has grown uh, to the membership that you see uh, listed here. Uh, Alderman Dumas or Corey, do you want to comment kind yeah, of on how this committee's developed? I'll speak to that. And, and I just, as Alderman Perkins was mentioning this, there's a, uh, on the, the beautification committee structure, it does list that each representative will be from each ward. Um, but I will say that the intent of the people that are listed on this committee, um, on the proposed membership, are those, as you talk, that have really morphed and continued to uh, come to the meetings. Uh, we've had several meetings. We've had uh, several significant developments, raising of monies, and I commend the committee chair, Dylan Cargis, for uh, most of that work. But um, I forget the time in which I came to the first, as the liaison to the board, the first meeting. But since that time, these are the individuals who have shown an interest and have continued to come to those meetings. Um, I, for one, personally think that, that in this, from this standpoint, um, that there's some significant attributes or 
the specificity of, of the, uh, the focus of each member is vitally important, um, not disregarding the ward aspect, but um, it's kind of a this is what's left standing type of approach to those that have been involved and want to still continue. Well, and, and the way the structure is worded is that it would be at, at least uh, uh, a, a representative for, from each ward, uh, or, or a minimum of seven with an attempt to have at least a representative from war, each ward. So a thought on this is uh, you, you could adopt the list of active participants as it stands and then where you don't have representation from a ward, you, you could uh, advertise for letters of interest uh, to, to fill that out. Alderman Perkins. Mr. Mayor, let me just, just respectfully say as a um, matter of integrity and credibility for this city uh, with regard to uh, these in distinguished uh, civic-minded individuals who are already on this committee, we need to be extremely careful uh, not to um, write these people off of this committee. I think it would be um, the, the best and, and prudent approach would be to approve your recommendation um, with the existing membership uh, in addition to the um, proposed membership and you can have your staff to uh, check to see um, does any of the existing membership no longer um, desire to serve, and I think that will be the healthiest way to approach this because um, we don't want to send any um, negative um, indications or indicators out from this. So I would propose that, you know, if it is the will of the board to, if we approve this um, proposal along with the existing membership together with the proposed membership, and if there's someone who does not want to serve, then we can always remove them at a later time. Yeah, and, and I, I concur with, with everything you just said, uh, and, and I just want to reiterate, if, as far as I'm concerned, if anybody is interested in, in city beautification, uh, I, I, I would like to uh, see them have a seat at this table. There's certainly no purpose uh, to keep somebody uh, from, from sitting in a meeting. Uh, so if I understand what you were saying, uh, it was a suggestion to adopt the existing membership uh, and also uh, the, the, the names that are uh, attached with the structure. I, I think it's an excellent idea. And I'll then form a motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Second. Motion has been made, let me make sure I get it right, uh, to approve the renaming of the Mayor's Beautification Committee to the City of Starkville Beautification Committee, adopting the structure, purpose, and bylaws, and confirming the appointees of membership as attached in addition to the original members of the committee. Is that your motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Discussion by, by the members of the board? Is there any discussion by the members of the board? <coughs> any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Next matter on the agenda is the discussion of a consideration for a date for the city bus tour and recap of the strategic planning session. Uh, and everybody should have, although I can't find mine, uh, a calendar. Oh, did, we have, did they end up? If everybody else has got it, that, that works. Uh, okay. It's left on our table. Okay, yeah. A, a calendar, uh, and this is um, a follow-up, I guess, to the uh, matter I introduced uh, two weeks ago, and that is setting a date uh, where we can do two things. I, I think, ideally, we need to set aside about four hours, uh, uh, at least two of which can be devoted to uh, bus ride ward by ward, uh, where we look at different uh, infrastructural issues uh, that, that each of you have in your own ward so that everybody gets a broader understanding of uh, what each of you uh, faces. And uh, then uh, two hours or less uh, revisiting our strategic plan, which we have a draft of, but it's going to need some tweaking before we actually adopt it. So this would be kind of a an extended uh, work session. Uh, and. Uh, 
could be either uh, on a, a Saturday or uh, a long afternoon on a weekday. Uh, Y'all have thoughts on that? Time's getting pretty packed, so we need to do it. Yeah, and I would suggest that we look at the weeks in between board meeting weeks. Because uh, I don't think you would want to do a board meeting and then turn right around and, and do this. So if you look at the month of May, that would give us uh, either next week, uh, the week beginning on Monday the 10th, or the week after the meeting on the 18th, which would be the week beginning on Monday the 24th. Uh, just a general thought. I think either Friday afternoons or Saturdays probably tend to uh, have the least schedule conflict. Uh, I know Alderman Perkins, you mentioned that you preferred weekends at the last meeting. That'll be fine, yes, sir. We, well, let's let's take that first Saturday, uh, the fifteenth. Uh, any <clears throat> any conflicts on Saturday? You got one? How about? I, I mean, I, I I'll just have to try. I mean. We can look at the 29th. Uh, is there any conflicts on the 29th? Is that Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. going on the 29th. Okay. I think. The 15th is probably going to be a better shot than the than the 29th. Uh, do you have something you think is flexible or not movable? I, I could know tomorrow, but I, I can't. Uh, I mean, I would have to call other people to find out if it's flexible or not. Okay. Okay. All right. So I guess let's work for now uh, with the idea of the 15th, knowing there's a chance we may not have Alderman Parker. Um, is a morning or an afternoon uh, session or midday uh, better? What do y'all think? On a Saturday, the 15th? Yeah. I think I'd rather do it in the morning. 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 Do it as early as possible. Anybody opposed to the morning? Start the ball. But it's still, it, 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 if uh, Alderman Park is not there, it still doesn't stop us from visiting his ward. No, absolutely not. Uh, and uh, as we get closer to doing it, we're going to have to work through it logistically. Uh, one of the things that I think will be helpful is for everybody to th see the things that are scheduled uh, for work from the city engineer, uh, but also maybe things that aren't scheduled for work uh, that, that you know of in your ward uh, that the discussion needs to be had about. One of the best ways I can think of to do that is perhaps if everybody coordinates with the engineer leading up to, so he's got a good uh, schedule of things to show mm -hmm. in each ward. So perhaps a way we could do that in the event that you weren't able to make it is you could go on and have the uh, items to be shown in your ward uh, coordinated with the city engineer. Do 8 to 12? 8 to 12? Great. Yep. Great. On the 15th? Okay. We don't necessarily have to have a motion on this. Uh, we can just all know that uh, that's the time to do it. will be an open meeting, so of course uh, press is invited and there'll be space on the bus. <laughs> Taylor, you buy breakfast. Tim, you buy lunch. <laughs> Okay. Any further discussion on that? All right. So right now the date for the bus tour and the strategic planning uh, uh, revisit is, is going to be uh, from 8 to 12 on Saturday, May 15th. What do you say, two hours each? Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think the strategic plan will take less time than... The bus ride will, but at the same time, uh, nothing has proven short thus far with the strategic plan, so I, I hesitate to, to say that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, since it's going to be open meeting, you may want to remember to recess until this time at the end of the meeting. Three. Well, it'll be a work session. Okay, I think it's an open meeting. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm with you then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on that? Any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, the next matter on the agenda is the consideration. All right, where is? Ah, okay. 
consideration of the approval of the necessary engineering design and construction work for an emergency repair of a heavily damaged bridge on Old West Point Road. I'm sure most everybody in here uh, is aware, read the account in the paper today, of a bridge failure uh, that we had uh, due to uh, heavy, heavy rain over the weekend uh, and the weekend before <coughs> on Old West Point Road. Uh, that bridge, um, what happened, is, and I'm not an engineer, so let me, let me offer that disclaimer, uh, but uh, that, the, uh, the, the, the side of that channel got eroded and trees fell into uh, the creek that that uh, bridge runs over, caused all the water to rush up uh, on, on one side of the bridge and, and essentially took all of the foundation out from under uh, that wall of the bridge. And uh, as uh, traffic began to pass over it, uh, a portion of it actually gave way, so there was a hole uh, in, in the top side of the bridge. Uh, and fortunately, uh, no one was injured and the, the scene was controlled uh, a, a, as quickly as uh, it was discovered. Uh, the city engineering department is going to be uh, out. They have been out some uh, surveying along with the street crew the damage previously, but they're going to be out doing a comprehensive survey of damage from the storms that we've seen uh, starting tomorrow to determine uh, what the comprehensive effect on uh, infrastructure at, at risk uh, may have been uh, from the storm. Uh, this matter deals specifically with the emergency of getting uh, the bridge on Old West Point Road passable and ultimately repaired again. Uh, the, the city engineer has worked on uh, different uh, funding sources, he has found a source to get the original, get, get the initial uh, preservation process of it uh, uh, done, where the bridge condition will be stabilized uh, through a grant from USDA. Uh, we are unsure, uh, it, it's unknown yet whether there will be additional funds uh, to uh, complete the bridge project, but as of right now, uh, those funds would have to come in-house. So what this is, uh, noting that the bridge has to be repaired, uh, and we will not sit out again for another two weeks. It gives the city engineer the latitude uh, to be able to go forward in, in a worst case scenario, uh, which could well come into fruition of uh, having to use city funds uh, to get the bridge operational. And it asks for up to $70,000. Mr. Mayor, and uh, if and when the board approves this, this uh, appropriation will not disturb any money that have already been earmarked for any specified projects, will it? No. Okay. No. It, uh, this money in a worst case scenario, and again, I guess the worst case scenario is very plausible in this case because right now we do not have another source of funding other than uh, the, the funds, which will be minimal from USDA, uh, would come from the road and drainage funds in future years. Uh, now, ultimately, the board would have to make a determination as to which street project uh, uh, would be displaced. So Alderman Corey. To echo what you said, then the line item you're recommending this come from, the erosion and drainage funds? or what? It would come from it uh, in future year. Uh, and Ms. Spruill, do you want to elaborate on that? Will this request involve the need for emergency purchasing as well? And if so, then do you need to have us craft a motion in a way that allows for that as far as the bidding process goes and everything for the work being done? Well, we're going to go out and get that. That's a better question for Marquita. We've, we've already got uh, an engineering firm that is on staff, basically, that we can approve as a board to have as a resource. But uh, from an emergency purchasing standpoint, um, I'll let Marquita address that. As far as the emergency purchasing, we will need to 
declare this the an emergency and, and use the emergency purchase bid laws for that. Okay. And that way we won't have to go through a bidding process. So we'll need to make a finding of fact that the emergency purchase is necessary for the benefit and welfare of the community given the washout of the bridge and just spell that out in the, in the body of the motion. Okay, so does the motion uh, that makes finding a fact of the emergency uh, have to be a separate motion or can it be a part of the motion? It can be a part of the motion. It, okay. Okay. Like it needs to be a part. Right. It, okay. All right, so uh, how's this need to read? Well, the, the important thing is the city engineer has, has set a, 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 a budget of $70,000, which is intended to be the worst case scenario. Uh, so ideally, it, it would uh, give the city engineer enough latitude to spend up to uh, $70,000. And also, the city clerk and the city attorney uh, have noted uh, that there needs to be a declaration of emergency. So that's another essential component. I can. Alderman Gore. I don't, I don't quite have PC's flair for motions, but I'll try to do my best to to come up with one real quick. And so that said, I would move that we approve the emergency repair of Old West Point Road, see, uh, the Old West Point Road Bridge, excuse me, um, <clears throat> to come from the capital improvements line item um, and that the city recognize this as an emergency purchase based on the finding of fact that is contingent upon the needs and welfare of the people of the city of Starkville. with an amount not to exceed Okay, so the motion is Necessary to ensure the health of an emergency. Yeah, of an emergency. Repair to ensure the health. Okay. Alderman Corey has made a motion to approve the necessary engineering, design, and construction work. Necessary uh, for the engineering, design, and construction work for the emergency repair based upon a finding of fact that it is necessary to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Starkville <coughs> of a heavily damaged bridge located on Old West Point Road in an amount not to exceed $70,000. Is that your motion? Close enough, yes. Okay. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. Oh, yeah. 
Motion has been seconded by Alderman Dumas. Alderman Ford, do you wish to speak on the merits? Uh, no. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. And uh, that concludes mayor's business. Uh, without objection, I, I would uh, move us into a uh, brief recess. Is there any objection to moving into a brief recess before we move to board business? Any objection seeing no? I need to know this. Mayor will now come back to order. Uh, we are now into board business, and the first matter of board business before us is the interview of candidates for the vacant uh, Starkville School Board position. Uh, and uh, we will conduct these interviews in alphabetical order. Now, uh, this is an open meeting. Uh, yeah, recuse myself, please. Yeah. We'll give Alderman Vaughn and Alderman Dumas a moment to exit the room. Uh, this is an open meeting, uh, so no one can be compelled uh, to, to leave the room. Uh, however, uh, this is an interview process, uh, so what the board has asked as a courtesy in the past is that applicants not being interviewed, uh, if you so choose, out of respect for your fellow applicants, uh, leave the room while they do their interview so as to not disadvantage somebody uh, who uh, might go first uh, where, where somebody else would have heard uh, their entire interview. So we will proceed with Dr. Aikens first, <coughs> Reverend Brand will be second, and Dr. Shannick uh, will be third. Uh, and each candidate uh, will have an opportunity to make uh, an, an opening statement uh, of your choice not to exceed five minutes. Dr. Aikens? My name is Erica Aikens. I was born and raised in Starfield. Um, I'm a proud graduate of Starfield Public School Systems, which laid the foundation for my college career. Um, I graduated in 1990. I was active in the band. I did a few plays. I wasn't very good at it, but I did it anyway. Um, in the first grade, my grandmother told me, I went home one day, and I distinctly remember her telling me, I said, Grandma, I hate school. She said, quit school. And then my graduation in December with my PhD, she said, I thought I told you to quit school. You kept going and you never quit. I'm not a quitter, I'm a fighter. I have a 14 year old daughter that's in the Starkville Public School Systems who's active in cheerleading, the band, JROTC, who was at cheerleading practice when I was walking through the door here. Um, so I'm a runner, I've run around. I participate in everything that the school district have pretty much. Um, I'm always with her, I'm supportive. Uh, of everything that she does. Now, what my goals, what I want to do with the school district is I want everybody to come together for the betterment of the children, the community, the administrators, the parents, everybody. Um, I'm really excited about the quality of our administrative team. I think they're doing a great job so far. Um, I'm looking forward to learning from them as well as helping them uh, with all my years of school. I am a researcher, I am an educator, uh, I currently work at East Mississippi Community College and I teach child psychology and human growth and development and I actually love my job. And I told myself uh, when I was teaching at Overstreet, I was a PE assistant, that I want to get back with those students, not in K through 12 but in a different way. And sure enough, those students that I taught many years ago have come back through me at East Mississippi Community College and it's been a great reward. Um, all children can learn. It's up to us to find out how they can learn, and that's my goal. That's my goal. Another goal of mine is to assist the administrators. I just want to assist, I want to learn from them, and I want them to learn from me, all that I can. I want to increase the graduation rate and decrease the dropout rate. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akins. Now open the floor for questions from the members of the board. Any questions? Alderman Carver. First of all, I just, on, on behalf, I'm sure of the mayor and the board of officers, thank you for putting your name in, into this hat. And, and uh, you come highly qualified and highly recommended. So, again, thank you for putting that in. And we're really a long question. <coughs> I'm not familiar with Choctaw Road. Is that inside the city limits? It's Rolling Hill subdivision. Okay. Okay. That's my only question. Okay. Further questions from the members of the board? 
Alderman Corey. Um, something I'm going to ask all the candidates. Would you try to just say something that you think the school system, in your opinion, is doing right and something that you think the school system should do better? Okay. Um, what I think they're doing right, one thing, for example, is the block schedule. I know a lot of people have a problem with the block schedule. But for a lot of students uh, who's very active, uh, some students aren't as active, but it gives them an extra day. And for those of you who are not familiar with the block schedule, they have classes every other day. Those same classes like Monday, Wednesday, Friday of this week, and the next week is Tuesday, Thursday, and so on and so forth. So to me, it gives children um, something different. You know, Instead of going to the same classes, six classes or seven classes daily, they get to go to four classes a day. And I think that's, that's good. It gives them that opportunity to do their homework, get it done, work on projects without being not as stressed. Um, something I think they're not uh, doing well or not as well, um, I think it's the communication between maybe parents, community, the students. <clears throat> Further questions from the members of the board? <coughs> Alderman Carp. Uh, so re re reiterate on that on the communication and accountability. What would be your plan? To look at we've gotten complaints through this whole process of maybe saying there was a lack of accountability on, on the school board members. What would you do to incorporate more accountability for, between yourself, put on this, the board, and say parents and superintendents? Alderman Carver, I'm a researcher and an educator. I want to emphasize that again. I believe in researching and researching some more. Now. Annual yearly progress, uh, <coughs> that's what the schools need to meet, have to meet in order to keep their head above water. Two schools in the state of Mississippi does that, and that's past Christian and Boonville. I would love to be able to talk to them to see what it is that they do in order to accomplish their goals. Because if we're not doing it, maybe we can incorporate it. Maybe we can learn from them. And I mean, it's a team effort. I think the whole state of Mississippi want our students to be a lot better than what they are. Alderman Sistra. Um, I have a couple of questions, and I'd like Alderman Corey will ask um, each of the candidates this. The school board is an um, oversight board uh, and a, a supervisory board. What do you see as the most important role that you can play in influencing the um, improvements that we all want to see in the Starkville school systems as a board member? As a board member, I want to be fair. Uh, I want to represent the students, those who don't have a voice. I want to be there for the parents as well um, and just provide my input. I don't have any, any dog in this fight as far as, I'm not connected to any body politically in this room. So I have my own agenda as far as my own mind. I think for myself um, and I just want to do what's right. And the other question I have is, <laughs> This is our second round of applications. We had excellent applicants the first time. We have good applicants, excellent applicants again this time. Um, why now? Why not the first time through? Well, everybody says uh, they. I've been asked that. Uh, why now? I wasn't ready. I was not ready. I don't feel like uh, mentally I wasn't there. Um, and then I asked myself, why not now? And so I did a little soul searching, and so now is as better an as an opportunity as any. Thank you. Further questions by the members of the board? Are there any further questions? Any further questions? Any further questions? All right. Seeing none. Thank you, Dr. Aikens. Thank you. And uh, could someone go and tap Reverend Brand?
Reverend Brand, would you like to make an opening statement? Nothing more than to say, I mean, that for my, my reason for applying for this and submitting my name is just that for our schools, I see a lot of potential. And, um, and I think that based on the community support of my name, just being able to connect our schools to the community, and I think thus far that's kind of been a disconnect. Um, and I think that would suffice as my opening statement, just to be able to, I guess, reattach those two. There seems to be some disconnect there. And that's the heart of why I'm here. Thank you, Reverend Brand. Questions from the members of the board? Alderman Corey. This is a question I'm asking all three candidates, and that is, kind of tell us something that you feel the Starkville School District is doing right, and something that you feel like the school district can do better. Something they're doing right and something they can do better, am I correct in that being your question? Yes. Um, I mean, for the standpoint of, I guess, doing right, um, I think there are some attempts being made to, um, to better our school district as a whole um, in some regards from all aspects, administrative and throughout. Um, and I think that would be a strength. Uh, now, with regard to something that is being done wrong, I go back to kind of what I said in my opening statements, just the disconnect that I feel there is between um, our current board and uh, the community. And uh, one issue that I guess I would just raise to argue that point, not that it matters to me one way or the other regarding uniforms, but there were several attempts made to gather the community's uh, position on that matter. And uh, the community, I think, spoke soundly each time. but the school board went ahead and, and, in my opinion, around the community to make the decision that was made with regard to that issue. Um, so I think that would be a weakness. I think if we're going to maximize the potential of our district, we're going to have to be able to connect um, our schools with the community because we're in a great community. We're in a place that has great resources, and I don't know that we're tapping into those as much as we can. Further questions? Alderman Sistro. I, I too am asking the same questions. The school board is an oversight supervisory type board. What do you see the most important role as a school board member that you would have in influencing and improving the city schools? And this is going to kind of sound like <laughs> recycling in a sense. Um, but again, to know what the concerns are of our community to make sure that our students and our community is being heard with regard to our school system. And I think that would be our job to play in that. And, and my other question was, as you know, obviously this is the second round of applications that we've taken for this position. Um, why now? Um, quite frankly, uh, many people in the community asked. Um, and with that in mind, after they're asking, and quite frankly, my prayer over the matter, um, I submit it. Thank you. Further questions from the members of the board? Are there any further questions? Alderman Carver. Do you uh, reside within city limits? Yes, I do. 101 LaFleur Street, Rolling Hill Subdivision. And do you have any children in the school district? My children not only go to go to school here now, but I do pastor members in the city school. And my kids will go to start with city schools when they're old enough. Further questions from the members of the board? Are there any further questions? Any further questions? Seeing none. Thank you, Reverend Brown. Thank you. And could someone go and tap Dr. Shannon? Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> And Dr. Shannick, would you like to make an opening statement? Sure. My name is Raj Bode, Alderman, and fellow citizens of Starkville. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. 11.15 on Friday morning, I was still debating whether I wanted to send in my application. But the admonishment my father gave me when I was six years old, haunted me and I thought, 
I must. Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Taking that admonishment and having lived here in Starkville for the last 38 years, I thought I needed to throw my hat, my name in the hat. As far as having been here and uh, being a student at Mississippi State, having had a business here, being at Texas A&M, I'm an immigrant. I, I was born in Kenya, went to school in England, uh, been here, like I said, for 37 years. I am a Vice President of Workforce and Economic Development at East Mississippi Community College. I have put probably 14, 15 nephews and nieces in the 70s and 80s through the school system here. And I have two lovely children right now who are in the 7th and 8th grade. What really <coughs> pushed the button for me was the last process y'all had having an eminently qualified person to be disregarded because of their race rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm looking at you, Mayor, directly. And when you talked about numbers of 64% of this race and 33% of that and 1% Asian Americans and 2% Hispanics, my whole life has been devoted to get away from that. To have brought that up, I thought, was an insult not only to the community, but also for us who love this community. That was the final thing that forced me into saying that I am that 1%, but I represent the will and perhaps the ambitions and the aspirations of the folks in this community just as well as anyone else does. If you want to look at qualifications, I think I have the qualifications. Y'all have a brief resume in front of you. I work with businesses, whether they are the American Eurocopters or the Packards. I work with school children. I work with getting grants to enhance our academic and intellectual capabilities. I serve on the education board with the Greater Starkville Development Partnership. We work with the county and the city. We have eminently qualified and dedicated teachers. I went to the meeting, the public forum that was held in Greensboro Center over the uniform issue. I was pleased to see that there were 300 people there that were so happy to participate in an issue that hit home to them for some reason. I also asked them, it would be nice if the same 300 people showed up when we were talking about our achievement gaps or the considerations of removing our VIVA programs or the security issues or whatever. Given Martin Luther King's admonishment that an individual's skin color should not be the criteria for judging people, it is whether you have the character and the competence. If nothing else, live to that. OK? One minute. I teach three-hour lessons. So <laughs> 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 Go ahead. <laughs> All right, are you ready for questions? Oh, sure. Questions from the members of the board. Right. Alderman Court. I'll jump in. This is something I've been asking all the candidates, and I would just like to ask, tell us something that you feel the Starkville School District is doing right, and something that you feel the Starkville School District can do better. The best of ours are doing great. The advanced placement things, the educational stuff, uh, whether it's college algebras or uh, uh, enhanced drama activities, the science labs and all that, we're doing really well. If you look at the indicators that came from the state, even though we are considered at risk, 
if you look at those who are doing, oh, the words escape me at the moment, the top two, uh, what are those criteria? I have, anyway, I have memory gap, 62 years of age, we'll do that too. Uh, highly performing and all that, 37% of our children are in, the, in that range. That is the best in the state of any school. So the things we are doing good, we're doing excellent. Whether it's our demographics or our socioeconomics or whatever they are, we have also a lot of people that are bifurcated, that are on the lower end, and the averages and all that bring us to the state levels of being at risk. So the school system does have great things. I think parent involvement is one of the challenges we have. And I think the communication, both from the superintendent and the administrators, and from others in, in perhaps even the school board. I think the communication gap is there. We do not communicate well with the parents. Further questions? Alderman Sistra. You answered one of my questions, which was why now as opposed to the first time uh, through with our round of applications, so I'll skip that one. The other is that the school board is an over oversight supervisory type board, and what do you see as the most important role as a school board member that you have in influencing the improvement of our schools? To, to demand rigorous and relevant instruction. And that has, it is to support the, the superintendent and other administrators, but also not be too hesitant without overpowering the superintendent's role to listen to the teachers and to listen to the parents and to listen to the students. That doesn't mean everything can be that democratic that if the students decide they don't like this thing that we go with that or if whatever. But I think uh, besides being, that was one of my tussles and I have talked to a lot of different school board members whether in Columbus or Caledonia or DeSoto County or wherever to see how proactive can you be, what your role is and what your limitations are. That's why perhaps staying on the outside, I considered that I can be more effective. But I would not, I would be remiss if I did not get involved and uh, see if my uh, various experiences, life and otherwise, can't be of some guidance and need and uh, fill a need as it arises with the administration and uh, other interested parties. Thank you. I know it was wordy. Perhaps it had no sense at all. Thank you. Further questions? Let I mean, me make, can I make one little statement? You may. I know these two other individuals. They're, they're qualified. And they can tonight teach at the same college. Okay? You will not go wrong in choosing one of the three. I was hoping perhaps there were going to be more. But I was also hoping that perhaps there were going to be people of diversity. Further questions? Any further questions from the members of the board? Any further questions? Thank you, Dr. Shannon. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you to all of the applicants uh, for coming forward and going through the interview process. Uh, next matter of board business is the consideration of making an appointment to the vacant Starkwood School Board position. Discussion. Is there any discussion from the members of the board?
need this guy. Mayor, may I speak? I think oh, we had three great applicants. I, I just think I, I can't speak for the rest of the board. I know that I'm trying to still process what we just heard because we heard three really good interviews and it's difficult to come off of something like that right away and then immediately make a decision. Yep. I, I understand the, the, the frustration and, and, and the desire for us to make an appointment tonight, but I, I too think I would make a better, I would make a better decision if I had an opportunity to to contemplate what I've heard tonight. So, Vice Mayor, would you, would you prefer uh, waiting until the next meeting? That, that would be my preference, but yes. I'm, I'm certainly going to go with what the board wants to do. I would discourage that uh, on the basis that th this process has gone on for a long time. Uh, and uh, the Starville School Board is still sitting with a vacancy. Uh, and uh, if there is no new information uh, that, that is to be obtained, uh, I would strongly encourage the board uh, to act this evening uh, because as I have stated previously, uh, coming to the end of what has been a, a very long and uh, tortured process. Uh, it is important for us to fulfill our responsibility, which is to uh, send one, someone to the Starkville School Board. Uh, and I, I would encourage uh, that we don't wait another couple of weeks. And I guess I'll ask the city attorney to weigh in on how our statutory, statutory obligation uh, might be affected by this. You know, the statute speaks, and, and we've mentioned this in every meeting, that the election you know, shall be made by the majority of the governing members of the Board of Aldermen, and that election shall take place the first meeting of February. And we know we're behind based on all the things that have happened, but um, acting today would be within the spirit and tenor of the statute uh, to try to, to get this done to bring closure to meet the timing requirements of the statute. We've surpassed that, though, right now. We right. have surpassed that now. So we'd be in the same situation two weeks from now that we're in right now? We would. This is, again, the most unique of tasks uh, that, that the board has. Uh, very similar to the city holding an election. This is actually referred to uh, in, in the statute uh, as an election. Uh, and uh, what, what we are doing now, uh, if if there is undue delay, yeah, it would be akin to pushing an election off uh, further and further down the calendar. And uh, again, it does bear consequences uh, for a school board uh, that, that currently has only four members in a vacant position. Alderman Carver. Mayor, I move approval of appointing Dr. Erica M. Akins to start the school board for the term 2010 through 2015. Alderman Carver has made a motion to appoint Dr. Erica M. Akins to a term on the Starkville School Board beginning in 2011 and ending on uh, in, and ending in 2015. Alderman Carver, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Do I hear a second? Seeing no second, motion fails for lack of second. <clears throat> Mayor. Alderman Park. I move approval of appointing Lee Brand to start for school board for the term 2010 to 2015. Uh, Alderman Parker has made a motion to appoint Reverend Lee Brand to the Starkville School Board for term beginning on 2010, and I paused because I think I said 2011 a minute ago, uh, and ending on 2015. Uh, is that your motion, Alderman Parker? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Perkins. Uh, Alderman Parker, do you wish to speak on the merit? I do not. Discussion? Any 
Any discussion by the members of the board? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll now move into a vote. Uh, and we'll take this vote by roll call on Alderman Parker's motion to appoint Reverend Lee Brand to the Starkville School Board for a term beginning in 2010 and ending in 2015. Please answer yay, nay, or abstain as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Cobber. Yay. Alderman Seastrunk. Abstain. Alderman Parker. Yay. Alderman Corey. Yay. Alderman Perkins. Yay. By a vote of four in favor, with zero against and one abstention, the measure passes. The next matter on the agenda is a report on the finding. Could you have time for the other alderman to get in? Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll give uh, other alderman a moment to get back in the room. All right, the next matter on the agenda is the report on the findings regarding speeding concerns on Bluefield Road. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, Pastor Bonner, who pastors a church on Bluefield Road, uh, came and expressed concerns about speeding uh, on Bluefield Road. Uh, at the request of Alderman Perkins, the Chief Administrative Officer, and the Chief of Police, uh, actually, uh, have gone out uh, and surveyed the scene uh, in order to determine uh, what the current condition is and what things uh, might be done uh, that can improve the condition from uh, uh, multiple aspects. Uh, you can continue. <laughs> I, you didn't need me up here, obviously. Well, um, no, y'all were the ones that actually <laughs> saw and uh, did the well. observation. Um, uh, the chief of police and I went out, uh, rode the, the Bluefield Road from 12 to the city limits, and there were several things that we found and that involved um, the street department and the electric department, as well as the police department. So let me give credit where credit is due. Uh, we determined that that area needed street lights. There were no street lights at all along Bluefield Road, so we, we worked with Mr. Hathaway to coordinate with Fort County to get some street lights at appropriate intervals along that road. We also noted that the uh, street speed limit signs were poorly placed in terms of getting uh, sufficient notice just as you come off 12 for the speed limit appropriate for that road. So we adjusted the location of that closer to 12 so that the notification would be there. And then the chief of police indicated he would step up the uh, amount of patrol that uh, went into that area to deter any speeding that might be going along. So hopefully we'll monitor it and that will satisfactorily solve the problem that was being experienced. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Briefly. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Bonner, uh, we've discussed that. You heard the report. I think you should be exceedingly pleased with that. And I, I think you would concur. Is that your assessment? Uh, yes, sir. I say Thank you, Pastor Bob. And thank you, uh, <coughs> Ms. Spruill and Chief Lindley, uh, for the work you did uh, in assessing the scene. 
Alderman Perkins? I just want to say this. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Thank you all of y'all very much. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the Bluefield matter? Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none, next matter on the agenda is the consideration of the adoption of a tree advisory board with mission statement, rule and structure, and the appointment of members to said committee. Alderman Dumas. Thank you. Um, this is something I brought forward last time. Uh, asked to give a little more time for consideration for this matter. So I just want to briefly introduce this as part of your staff recommendation um, sheets. You have the actual um, structure, term and office rules, purpose and goals. The um, As I've started this conversation and I've, I've going through several iterations with this, and Richard, you can chime in here in a little bit. I, um, the Urban Forestry Commission for the state of Mississippi has been in contact with us. Richard has worked with them. We have a workshop happening Thursday. And what this will do, what this tree advisory board will do, and what that workshop will do will help us with uh, all matters regarding tree care, other type issues within the city. And we see this as a real uh, positive for how we can continue to increase our tree canopy coverage, uh, et cetera. And I've worked with Stephen Grado, who is a part of the Mississippi Urban Forestry Council, uh, to help put this group together. <clears throat> and as it so happens, Ben Griffith, our city planner, has been drafting a landscape ordinance for a couple of years. And part of that ordinance, part of his recommendation is for us to ad uh, establish a tree advisory committee as well and so as not only we're working through uh, ordinance issues and adoptions and amendments with the comprehensive plan this is part of the recommendation that um, our planner has as part of how he sees this moving forward so with that I'd like to move approval of the creation of a tree advisory board as presented the structure and the appointment of the membership as outlined in the enabling document and the appointment of the members as provided in the board packet to include ISA certified arborist Pam Collins, GIS specialist Wayne Wilkerson, landscape architect Brian Templeton, Mississippi Urban Forestry Council representative Stephen Grado, plant ecologist Robert Bruzak, tree and landscape ordinance specialist Chris Campany, and horticulturist Richard Harkis. Alderman Dumas has made a motion to approve the creation of a tree advisory board and Alderman Dumas I believe the motion you made is as printed in the packet is that correct? That is correct. All right uh, do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas do you wish to speak on the merits? I do not. Uh, discussion. Alderman Parker. The, is, does this Section 31, does that also go into that? Yeah and I don't I, I shouldn't confuse that. The, the Section 31 the draft is it's just a print of the page of the ordinance that uh, Ben has been working on. So this is no official part of so this what we are adopting. It. Yeah, and I, I apologize for that confusion. I put this on your table just so you could see the language in which he has been working for the last couple of years moving forward with the landscape ordinance. Okay. Uh, and this is an advisory committee that will yes. bring things to us. That will bring things to us. Alderman Carver. I may have missed it, but who's your board of aldermen liaison and your city of staff liaison? Uh, city staff liaison is, um, as it read, reads in the structure, city of Starville staff liaison from the landscape division of the public works department to assist the tree advisory board as appropriate in achieving its purpose and goals. At this point, we do not have a liaison from the board. Further discussion? Any further discussion on Alderman Dimmons' motion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the consideration of making an appointment to the Board of Adjustment and Appeals position in Ward, Ward 2 with a term ending June 30th, 2010. Discussion. Um, Mayor, I move approval of appointing Milo Burnham to the Starkville Board of Adjustments and Appeals 
for Ward 2 for the term 2010-2015. Alderman Sistrock has made a motion to approve Milo Burnham to the Starkville Board of Adjustment of and, and Appeals for Ward 2 for the term from 2010 to 2015. Is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Carver. Alderman Sistrock, do you wish to speak on the merits? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure passes. All and, and I'd like to thank Mr. Burnham for his past two right, years of service. <laughs> the next matter on the agenda is the consideration of <laughs> making an appointment to the Commission on Disability for position for positions with uh, terms with terms ending on June 1st, 2010. Discussion? Again, I move approval of appointing Beth Ann Elsey and Whitney Hilton to the Starkville Commission on Disability for the terms um, 2010 to 2014. Alderman Sistrock has made a motion to approve the appointment of Beth Ann Elsey and Whitney Hilton to the Starkville Commission on Disability for the term from 2010 to 2014. Alderman Sistrock, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Carver. Alderman Sistrock, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, thank you. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Next matter on the agenda is the consideration of making an appointment to the Parks Commission for a term ending June 30th, 2010. Discussion. Any discussion? Mayor, it would be, it would be my honor to move that we reappoint Chris uh, Taylor back to the uh, Park Commission for another term. Alderman Corey has made a motion to approve the appointment of Chris Taylor to the Starkville Parks Commission for a term from 2010 to 2017. Alderman Corey, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Corey, do you wish to speak on the merits? Nope. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Next matter on the agenda is the consideration of the amendment of the public appearances policy to reflect a maximum number of public appearances and public hearings for any board meeting. Alderman Perkins. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the recognition. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm asking for the board to give unanimous approval to this uh, proposed board policy for public appearances and public hearings at the City of board meetings. It is my opinion that this is a very reasonable and legitimate uh, governmental measure. Um, this policy uh, does not in any way um, preclude nor prohibit any public hearing nor public appearance. Uh, the purpose of this um, proposed policy is to allow the board to best manage its docket and to conserve time. Uh, it is well stated in the mission statement here that um, the policy is likewise intended to provide optimum time for consideration of comments and issues that are presented during the board meeting regarding any matter that's the subject of a public hearing. Basically, this policy further uh, is an effort to uh, best utilize our time and resources for any one meeting. It's just like we do in other matters throughout this board meeting in the city. Um, one thing uh, in particular with our um, citizen comments, we have a limit of three minutes. And the reason we do that over the years is because we want to manage our time and our resources so it will be open-ended. And this proposed policy falls in line with that to further um, advance this um, uh, argument for this policy that even with our municipal uh, court system, we have courts uh, on Monday uh, afternoon and Tuesday nights and Wednesdays and Thursdays. And the reason we do that is because we can't trial the cases or they cannot trial the cases on any one day. And that, just like our circuit court is in the session now, uh, you know, 
no lawyer can just walk up and go in the courtroom and just argue his case at any time just because his case on the docket. Uh, we have a court administrator that is done so we can uh, get before the court at the time that uh, the court docket allows us to do that. Uh, it is very evident that we as a governing body can uh, be more effective when we have adequate and sufficient time to consider evaluate and deliberate on the matters and issues. Um, uh, over the past uh, few meetings, um, you know, we have been here at the last meeting, we're here at least until 11.15 uh, p.m. at the last meeting when we came out of executive session, and that meeting was uh, propelled by numerous public hearings and public appearances, and that's been the case throughout this uh, term. So, Basically, uh, a, a, a yay vote for this policy is, is not telling anybody that, no, you cannot appear before the board. A yay vote is not telling someone that you cannot make a public appearance. A yay vote is not telling someone that there will be zero public hearings. A yay vote is a vote to best manage uh, our docket and so we can give the, the optimum consideration to those that appear before uh, this board. And as the mission statement further stated, a, such a policy designed not to overburden the process and allow thoughtful deliberation of all matters involving input from the public coming before the Board of Aldermen. Uh, one thing I do want to stress uh, in policy is is very well drafted, and I want to commend the, the drafter of this policy, and it allows for an exception, whereas the, the intent is to not have more than two public hearings and two public appearances for any one meeting, but the exception specifically says, that unless it is determined through the office of the mayor that the public appearance request rises uh, to the level of a matter that requires immediate attention, of course, then the submission will be placed on the next agenda. And also, the policy does not uh, deny any uh, board member from bringing a matter to the board that he or she deems to be of um, ultimate importance. So there's no denial of anyone to ever appear before our board. So I think that uh, this policy uh, is one that we should go ahead and approve. It, it definitely promotes uh, our uh, police powers, which is basically our uh, the, the welfare of our city. So I'm asking the board to um, to go ahead and um, and adopt this um, a policy, and I think it is a very reasonable and legitimate governmental measure. And Mr. Mayor, I move uh, approval of this policy as it is written and in, uh, in contain our packet as relates to public appearances and public hearings. Alderman Perkins has moved approval of the modification of the public appearances policy and to add public hearings to the policy as presented to limit said agenda items per any one board meeting. Alderman Perkins, is that your motion? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Any discussion by the members of the board? Any discussion? Any discussion? Mayor, may I ask a question? You may. Alderman Perkins, I just want to be clear about... Uh, a document in the packet. I see the board policy for public appearances dated May 5th, 2010, and then there's the reference to our previous ordinance about public hearings. Hearings. That was just a reference, right? I mean, that doesn't change anything. Uh, Ms. Rule, that's that was just a reference. Just reference. Right. Board full understanding of what, has been, what has been done now, and then how this is different and separate and distinct from that. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Measure clearly passes. Uh, uh, I tell you what, we did have division. Let's let's go on and take it by roll call. Uh, please answer yay, nay, or abstain uh, as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Nay. Alderman Sistro. Yay. Alderman Parker. Yay. Alderman Corey? Yay. Alderman Duma? Yay. Alderman Perkins? Yay. And Alderman Farr? Yay. Six more. By measure, uh, by a vote of six in favor, uh, <coughs> one against, and zero abstentions, this measure passes.
The next matter on the agenda is the consideration of the approval of the reg registration and attendance of the Board of Aldermen, the City Clerk, and the Chief Administrative Officer to the Mississippi Municipal League Conference held in Biloxi, Mississippi from June 27th to July 1st, 2010. Discussion? Oh, Mr. Mayor, oh, that's oh, about the M ML. It is. Oh, the only reason I pull that because I just want to make sure uh, that when we approve it that we give the authority for any authorized per diem and travel to be uh, issued in advance. And, I, and let me go ahead and I'll make the motion, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move approval of the, um, let me find my notes here. I had read some on, but let me go ahead. I move the approval of the registration and attendance of the Board of Aldermen, the uh, City Clerk, and the Chief Administrative Officer to the Mississippi Municipal League Conference held in Biloxi, Mississippi from June 27, 2010 to July. 2010 and that any authorized per diem and travel expenses, if any, shall be advanced to the authorized person that may be necessary and proper. Got this as well. And the reason I put that in, Mr. Mayor, because it's always an issue in the past and make sure we can advance it. This is consistent. Okay, the motion is to approve the registration and attendance of the Board of Aldermen, the City Clerk, the Chief Administrative Officer, and the Chief Administrative Officer to the Mississippi Municipal League Conference held in Biloxi, Mississippi from June 27, 2010 to July, for, tw July 1, 2010, and to authorize, or and that any, authorized per diem and travel advance uh, Shall, shall, shall go to, shall be distributed to the authorized person that is necessary and proper. That's correct. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion is seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the mayor? No, sir. Any discussion? Any I've discussion? Got, I've Alderman got one. Dumas. Um, last year, sitting on, in the awards banquet, and there was uh, some Hall of Fame recognition. I want to say you're coming up pretty, you're, you're, you're right. getting pretty close, I'm getting aren't pretty you? Close. I'm <laughs> so I, it'd be it. good to see somebody. Uh, That's right. <laughs> representing Starville at the Hall of Fame banquet. So. I'm getting close. Good. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Mr. Mayor, I've got one comment. <clears throat> okay. Need a moment of education here. Okay. Um, I made a mistake on not taking off item K, but since that's well, since that's part of consent agenda, mm -hmm. it's been adopted. Mm -hmm. Would we have to rescind the entire consent agenda, or can we rescind one item? I think you can make a motion uh, to rescind that item uh, from the consent agenda. Because I've just got one question about that. Yeah. And two <coughs> potential routes you could go is you could have the discussion and determine whether you would like it removed, or you can go ahead and remove it and have the discussion. Uh, the well, let's minute. do that. And, okay. and this just, a, and, and I've already asked Marquita about this, but um, I just had a question. There was a hundred dollar difference in the proposals um, when you look at when you add them up per cut, and and I know we've got the lowest and best opportunity, and I don't know anything about either one of these companies, but I was just wondering if if there was not a best opportunity here by awarding this contract to a local firm instead of one from our local company instead of one from Epora. That that was that was my only comment for the for the discussion. I don't know if anybody else has those same discussion from the board. I don't know one from the other either. I mean, I don't know if both are out of town or if both are local. I, I don't know either. One of them is local. Uh, I don't know if there was a difference in proposals as far as quality of service or what they do, but. Yeah, well, one of them has an MSU address. Uh, you've got Circle J uh, from Eupora that had the lowest bid, and you have U.S. Lawns uh, with a with a P.O. box at MSU. Uh, so I, I don't know. To the best of my knowledge, uh, U.S. Lawn is not a local company. They are a national brand, national, nationally recognized, and I think they're closest office is Jackson, Mississippi. So I don't know if they're going to drive. Well, that's what I was going to ask because I know U.S. Lawns is a national company, but I I. I had heard that that there was a, and I saw a truck the other day. I was just asking. I didn't know anything about them. If if this was a low, if if in fact they had just opened a company here or not, but 
That was Mr. Griffith. Um, all the news, I, I believe the U.S. line is a franchise. So it is a franchise, yeah. U.S. line is a franchise, so they have locally known um, franchises around the country. And that's, that's my understanding. So do we now have one installed? Uh, it's yeah. in the area, I believe. We do, Matthew? Yeah. How is they service, Matthew? I know it's, it's a new, newly uh, they bought into the franchise, it's a new service, so I don't know if they have a reputation. Mm -hmm. has, has this Circle J been doing? Yeah. And we need to stay yeah, with them 25 hours. They're the ones yeah. yeah. currently. And well, I mean, we're happy with those. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. All right, good. That's all I have. That's all I'm talking about. Any further discussion on that? Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none, the next matter on the agenda is the request for approval for in-kind services uh, from the city for drainage improvement work in the amount of uh, $1,811, and this item is from the Move airport. Approval, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion has been made by Alderman Perkins to approve in-kind services from the city for drainage work in the amount of $1,811.68 for the airport board. Alderman Perkins, that's your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey, Alderman Perkins. Do you wish to speak on the no, merits? So any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. And the next matter on the agenda is the request for approval for the fire department claims docket. You may. We'll give Alderman Carver a moment to exit the room. Move approval. Motion has been made to approve the City of Starkville Fire Department claims docket as of April 28, 2010. Alderman Dubin, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Sistrock. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? Do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The measure clearly passes. We'll give Alderman Carver a second to re-enter the room. The next matter on the agenda. Okay, the rest of that. All right, it's the next thing. Electric department. Is that what you have? Okay. Next matter on the agenda is the request for authorization for the mayor to sign a TVA rate change agreement effective on October 1st, 2010. Mr. Hadaway. Mayor and board, this, uh, this agreement basically is. Uh, what TVA is trying to do, they're trying to change their rates, and this this agreement actually just changes the way that they calculate and, and build the uh, uh, the different uh, distributors within the Tennessee Valley. It is a revenue neutral uh, uh, agreement, uh, and it won't really take effect until October the first of this year. And TVA is giving the uh, uh, East Distributor right now two options of how they want to do that. Uh, one is a nearly flat demand and energy uh, rate, and the other is a uh, nearly flat uh, time of use rate. And uh, as like I say, right now the TVA is giving the distributor the uh, the uh, option of, of which one the distributor will want to take, but in 2012, uh, CBA will actually go to the nearly flat uh, time of use rate, uh, and that's, that's where they're headed to. And most of that is due strictly in, as to how uh, TVA can uh, curb its demand on the system. Alden Perkins. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I request for this cost consent agenda. I want to be sure I have one question respectfully, Mr. Hathaway. Does our granting the mayor authorization to sign this agreement in any way triggers a rate increase at any time based on your understanding of this document? Can I answer that? We have, uh, <clears throat> my name's Jeff Atwell with Atwell Magent. Uh, we have done analysis with these new wholesale rates and 
we look primarily at two things. One, how will it affect the retail rate payers? Number one concern, uh, and it has no effect. So you're so you you're clearly telling me and the rest of the members of the board and the public that if we vote in the affirmative for this, that we're not saying that we're in no way triggering a rate increase. There's nothing in this document that triggers or allows or promotes or enhances or propels a rate increase. That is correct. And, okay. and let me qualify that by saying <clears throat> we looked at three years worth of load data to, to make a determination whether there, there was going to be any impact either on the rate payers or the electric department financially. Uh, and when we did that analysis, of course, each year is different depending on weather conditions. You know, if you have a hotter summer, revenues are up, and, and it, it impacts customers differently. Uh, in 2009, using that load data, it, uh, it made a difference of about $4,000 in total revenue for the electric department. And to put that in perspective, the, the typical billings of the electric department are between uh, 38 and $40 million. So they're negligible. Right. Mr. Mayor, let me ask, appreciate your response, but since Mr. Hannaway is our department head, I want him to answer that question too. So uh, are you telling us that that in no way promotes or enhances or allows for any increase in, in labor <coughs> rates? This document does not. No, okay. Sir. All right. Further discussion? Any this, further? this is the type where <coughs> peak hours, kilowatt hours are charged at a higher rate versus lower you know, non-peak hours, it's a lesser rate, so things equal out. Isn't that the type of variable rate we're talking about here? Okay. Yes, and it's it's very, very incremental right now. TVA is just, and I don't want to speak for TVA, but they're just trying to get the distributors moving in that mindset right mm -hmm. now. Long term, you know, I think that's where they're going. Right. I and mean, we're talking long term. This is going back to what the, the uh, uh, Obama uh, administration is talking about the smart grid, mm -hmm. and uh, this is part of that. Thank you. Further discussion? There are, is. Well, I guess one of, are, are we, City of Starville, I mean, we're capable of variable billing? I mean, we can... Not at this time, no, sir. We're okay. going to have to grow into that. But we'll be able to do this in October? No, no. sir. 2012. This, this is strictly okay. on the wholesale right now. Wholesale. We're talking okay. on the wholesale. Okay. Retail is further out. Further out. Okay. Yes. Understand. Further discussion. There is no motion pending. I move approval. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to authorize the mayor to sign the TVA rate change agreement effective on October 1st, 2010. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merit? I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Thank you, boys. The next matter on the agenda is the request for approval of a change order for drainage improvement. Oh, excuse me. I skipped one. The request for consideration of the approval of the low bid for the Reed Road widening project and authorization to enter into a con contractual agreement with contractor. Uh, the city engineer is uh, with, with his wife, uh, who is expected to uh, go into labor at any moment now. So uh, the chief administrative officer will be standing in uh, this evening. Uh, and she is uh, not an engineer, but works closely with uh, Alderman Paul. I got a question, Ms. Brewer. You might be able to answer for me. I will do my best, Alderman. I see they say saying, well, we're going to cut ten to fifteen thousand dollars to make some minor alterations. What what is the old minor alteration going to be? I see you asked me something I don't know. I, what they were what they were saying is my understanding is that the ten to fifteen thousand is is negligible to the impact of the project. I don't know what the minor alterations are. This this not coming out to four hundred thousand dollars that were already allotted by the past board. It's not going to come out of that either. No, sir. What, what this is going to do is the budget went over. The, we underestimated the, the part of the project. The uh, asphalt prices went up. The mobilization cost went up. And so we projected a certain amount that is, that is not in the budget. So we're, he's, 
Mr. Kemp is suggesting that there is, are some funds available in the uh, hospital road project that it, it has a contingency fund that appears to be available and that there are some funds in the 2010 capital improvement project, street improvement projects that will be able to pull from there. So there are some ways that we can find some of those funds. Hopefully some of those other uh, funds will come in or the budgets will come in under with the contingency funds and we won't impact those and we'll be able to make that difference up on this reed road project. So we will not, we will not shortcut the plan. No, no sir. The plan remains the same. The only, only issue we've got right now is getting some right away from uh, Carrington folks and uh, Attorney Latimer is working on that through their terms. So hopefully that will come to fruition shortly. Mr. Let me just ask a friendly follow up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so just to follow up to what Alderman Vaughn was saying, you know, the, the uh, handout reflects that it will be a reduction of ten to 15000 that's just uh, for FYI, but at the same time, if this motion is approved, it does not uh, include a reduction of the project. No, sir. It is intended as, as a cost savings that they found by, by changing s some minor elements to it. It does not impact the project negatively at all. It will be the same project. Right. And when you get that, um, just let us uh, know what, the, what those minor The details of yeah, them? Yeah. Okay, I will do that. I will move approval, Ms. Uh, <laughs> May I approve the consideration of approval of the lower bid for the Reed Road Widen Project and authorization to enter into the contract agreement with said contract. Alderman Vaughn has made a motion to approve the low bid for the Reed Road Widening Project and authorization to enter into contract uh, con con contractual agreement with said contractor. Alderman Vaughn, is that your motion? That's my motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Vaughn, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure passes. Next matter on the agenda is the approval of a request for a change order in the amount of $8,435 for Hollis II. Discussion. Alderman Vaughn. Uh, Ms. Quill, on, the, on these uh, Hollis, will, will this uh, have an effect on, on the other projects right here when we move this fund right here? Do you know? No, sir. That should not impact those funds. This is a, this, these are fairly minor adjustments reflecting the need to use a different type of seeding process that will better, better stay. As I think Mr. Kemp mentioned in his paperwork, the last time we seeded something, it got washed away. So this keeps us from having to go back and redo something if the weather, inclement weather, creates a problem for that project. And the same thing applies to all three of these, 345? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move approval of items number three, four, and five under the engineering streets um, uh, portion of the agenda, items three, four, and five. Alderman Perkins has made a motion to approve items F3. Uh, hold on, let me get the full number. Uh, that's 11 right. Items 11F3, 11F4, 11F5, did you include six? Uh, no, we have a question about the dollar amount on that. Okay. We'll items 11F3, item 11F4, and item 11F5 uh, as presented. Is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir, Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Next matter on the agenda is the request for approval of invoice from Ellis Construction in the amount of $25,800 for services rendered associated with the Old West Point Bridge project. Mr. Brewer. And, and my error on this, I believe I probably was premature in making the entry. $25,800 is without the sales tax. So the correct amount is $26,703. Mayor, that's what that the question was about, so we're going to approve that one. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move approval of invoice from Ellis Construction in the amount of $26,703 for the services rendered associated with the Old West Point Road Bridge Project. Alderman Dumas has made a motion to approve of the invoice from Ellis Construction in the amount of $26,703 for the services rendered associated with the Old West Point Road Bridge Project. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. 
Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic clearly passes. Thank you, Mayor Bull. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. And the next matter on the agenda is the request for approval to join the Golden Triangle Multi-Jurisdictional Task Force. And you've already heard from the Chief. Is there any discussion? Mayor, I move approval um, to join the Golden Triangle Multi-Jurisdictional Task Force as um, outlined in our um, information previously presented to the board. Alderman Sistrunk has made a motion to approve the proposal to join the Golden Triangle Multi-Jurisdictional Task Force as outlined in the packet presented. Is that your motion, Alderman Sistrunk? Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Sistrunk, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda is the request for approval for the mayor to execute a construction contract with Stidham Construction for the sole qualified source of supply bidder to install a tie-in, oh, to install and tie-in a 24-inch uh, force main to the wastewater plant. Mr. Devil. Good evening, Mayor Board. Um, as you recall, we're getting federal uh, assistance with this project, and they have rather unique rules and regulations um, in the awarding of, uh, of the work to contractors. Um, we're allowed to use our source of supply bid schedules for this project, but um, despite the amount of the contract, they, they require that we, uh, the contractor, provide a performance and payment bond as part of the contract. Um, so what we did is the, uh, the two low source of supply bidders for the provision of performance bond, we're asked to go to their underwriters and get quotes um, for providing those bonds. And um, one withdrew his interest in the project, the low bidder, and the uh, the second low bidder, Stidham Construction, uh, provided a proposal with a performance bond. So what I'm asking tonight is approval for the mayor to execute a contract uh, with Stidham Construction to install this this force main. Discussion. May I move? I move approval for the mayor to execute a construction contract with Stidham Construction, the sole qualified source of supply bidder in the amount of $29,757.50, contingent on the city attorney's review and approval of the final contract document. Motion has been made by Alderman Parker to approve the mayor to execute a construction contract with Stidham Construction, the sole qualified source of supply bidder, in the amount of $29,957.50, the lowest bonded bidder contingent on the city attorney's review and approval of the final contract documents. Is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Dumas. Alderman Parker, you wish to no. speak? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic clearly passes. Thank you. And that exhausts the non executive session portion of the agenda. We have. Uh, potential matters for executive session concerning pending litigation and personnel uh, to discuss. Do I hear a motion to move to a closed session? Mayor, I move we go to closed session to discuss the need for executive session. Alder Alderman Corey's made a motion to move into a closed session to discuss whether there's a need for an executive session. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Motion been seconded by Alderman Sistrock. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. We'll now move in.